David, the week that was, what do you make of what's going on in the world? Well, uh, good question. I think, um, uh, thanks for the question. I think we, we see long-term uh, you know, innovation and growth in the tech sector. That said, uh, we've already seen our clients uh, swallow kind of a 20% equity uh, you know, reduction this year. Uh, that's mostly been multiple adjustment. The second half of the year, we think, is actually about sorting out how much demand pulls back. We, we believe uh, there are major disruptions from supply chain as well as war and now the recessionary effects of a demand pullback which as we look into our client base, we think that's actually going to be revealed to be more substantial than people think and surprise the market some more. So volatility is a buzzword again. The world mm -hmm. is volatile, the markets are volatile, but you see an opportunity to do what you call kickstarting the rebuild. What do you mean by that? Uh, what we talk about is that in a downturn, there is opportunity. And particularly if you can be uh, an incumbent or someone who is strong in your sector, uh, there's a flight to quality. It creates more opportunities for you to grow. It creates more opportunities for you to do M&A. It creates more opportunities for you to do deals. But there's a process of managing through the downturn such that you can gain share and gain market position. It's kind of a double-edged sword, right? Especially when we talk about growth equity, because a lot of these innovators, they need cash. They need money to, to grow, to expand what they're doing. But if you're an investor, that carries risk in this environment. So how do you pass that? Yeah, great question. We see growth equity as <clears throat> a direct result of the unique innovative conditions in the tech sector today. Uh, it turns out that the markets have put down over the last decade enormous amounts of cloud computing, pervasive connectivity, GPS infrastructure, et cetera, and it's created an environment in which new companies can be built and scaled extremely rapidly. And if you understand that playbook, you can invest behind it with a growth equity formula that is extraordinarily high, high payback. Um, so I think that formula has not gone away. Those conditions have not gone away. We're going to have to work through these uh, the, these. Uh, difficult environment you know, in the next six to 12 months. But after that, I think we'll have the, a return of the same extraordinary innovation conditions. David, we're showing a lot of red on the screen on a year-to-date basis in equity markets, on a weekly basis. But it's Friday. Let's, let's think about the positive, the opportunity. And I enjoyed your latest research, right, because you're talking about specific areas, the role of Web3 in rewriting the rules of digital user identity. You're excited about AI in customer success. How do you convince investors that now is the time to deploy capital to those areas? Yeah, I think um, it's been interesting to watch equity uh, multiple adjustments. The hardest hit by far have been the smaller companies with the extraordinarily high growth rates. There's been a flight to quality, and that just makes a number of extraordinarily innovative and important, frankly, assets available at much cheaper prices than it would have been otherwise. So uh, I guess we would say, uh, Innovation is very much alive. <clears throat> We're looking down the barrel of a massive growth in the metaverse, Web 3.0 being one piece of that. Um, and we just think that um, this transitional effect creates opportunities for uh, smart players to make good bets. David, I'm going to bring up a chart which I saw in your research, which shows the growth of growth equity relative to public markets, equity, venture capital, and, and what we see in terms of buyouts in the market. What is the story that this chart is telling on our screens? Yeah, great question. The basic story there is the extraordinary growth of the growth equity investor tranche. You know? And growth equity is not a new concept, but it's, it's meant to be targeted at a life stage that you know, is going from uh, you know, stability to scale. And as I mentioned before, we just think it reflects the growth here has grown to 27% of total capital deployed. That's extraordinary. It's doubled since the last two years. So we just think it reflects the <clears throat> conditions of innovation that are ever present in tech right now. The pervasive uh, availability of cloud computing, of um, uh, connectivity, of AI, of technologies, payment systems, you name it. Uh, just allows a good concept to be uh, created and scaled extremely rapidly. And investors have sorted that out. They've actually made that into a great business. If you're an investor anywhere in the world in the last two years, you've done a bit of reading about semiconductors and the global chip industry. Everyone is trying to become an expert on the chip industry. Where do you see 
the health of the chip industry in terms of su supply bottlenecks, but, but also the, the story has turned so quickly to demand. Yeah, the, the chip story is, is a multifaceted one. It started out uh, two and a half years ago with the auto industry canceling its, its orders and those orders being reallocated to keep factories full. Um, when the economy recovered more quickly than people thought, there was just no availability because the factories protect themselves by backfilling. Since then, it's become you know, an extraordinary story of global disruption that occurs as uh, individual players lose their orders, underproduce, overproduce, et cetera. And it shows us that how dependent we really are on chips. And it's not just leading edge chips, it's chips at all um, at, at all places within in the uh, node, node progression of, the, of right. the fabrication. And that is also, of course, shone a light on the relationship between the United States and China. And I know that your research has touched on that as well. Yeah, there's a whole other layer to this story, which is that <clears throat> you know the world has found itself um, extremely dependent on a small number of companies to produce these. Some of which, one of which is very important, is Taiwan Semiconductor in Taiwan. And to the extent um, there's a single point of failure in your supply chain, uh, this chip shortage has really highlighted for folks uh, how how dependent they really are uh, on on that single company. And many companies are looking to uh, diversify. With all that in mind. Give me the David Crawford projection for 2023 in the world of tech. Yeah, uh, simple. And any the back end of 2023 will be about innovation and growth and and sorting out how to win here. I think the next six to eight months will be working through the the disruptions that we're experiencing now, um, and those include everything from the geopolitical environment to, as you described, the supply chain shortages. One of which is the chip shortage. Um, uh, as, as well as the recessionary effect of demand pullback.